future. And Fox 5, Sierra Fox joins us live from Northwest, right outside Capital One Arena. Sierra, what's at stake? Well, Jim and Angie, what's at stake is thousands of jobs and millions of dollars. Now, right now, downtown is hustling and bustling. I'm sure you can hear the music from the cars because Madonna has a concert here at Capital One Arena. But we know that this area has been struggling ever since the COVID-19 pandemic. And if the Caps and Wizards move, that won't help with revitalization efforts. Let me tell you something, man. That's horse shit. This area's been struggling since Sun Team started hanging down there. Man, listen, this is like one of the go-to spots for like misfits and dudes that got ran off their block or niggas that ain't got nowhere to go or motherfuckers that's more like, they not like corner standers or hanging in project hallways. They thugs, but they like to move around, you know what I'm saying? They like to, you know, be in the mix of shit and not just oh, stand yeah. in the, the courtyard. Because some like, thug niggas don't, you know, they don't like standing on the same corner 24 hours a day or sitting in the project hallways. They want to be a part of the city, you know, the vibrants. Them the type of niggas that's down here. Yeah. And it's a bunch of riffraff down here, man. A bunch. When I say a bunch, <laughs> man, I used to go down here all the time, man. I'm saying like young cats or like, like, like all ages type shit. Young cats. I'm talking about 15, 16, 17, 18. Like Okay, okay. If you were if you were a little perk, one of them little type dudes, you go down there, man, you're gonna see your ops. Or you can you can see an op or you can see somebody that you got drama with. This right here is horse shit. I just had to correct her on that. That's not what's making this place down. It's niggas standing around in the cut. Like, right here is the train station, so it's easily accessible. The X2 rides up one of the, like, the major bus lines. X2 runs right here. The, the 70 runs down here, another major bus line. If you're from any part of the city, you can get down here. Train, all that shit. Efforts. In 1997, Capital One Arena opened, bringing growth and vibrancy to downtown D.C. However, a new study by the D.C. Policy Center reveals if the Caps and Wizards end up playing across the river, the Chinatown neighborhood will no longer be a prime destination and surrounding businesses could shut down. I hate the move. I really don't like it. Um, I think a lot of the restaurants in the area um, that I go to frequently uh, might be struggle in the future we're going to see less demand on restaurants um we've seen uh, since 2000 about 136 restaurants open in that vicinity and today we have only 96 left executive director yeshman sayan says less foot traffic could mean a rise in crime in an area where violence is already a concern the drugs the carjackings all that would just go through the roof i can remember like 15 years ago this was a main attraction. All my friends would come down here and we'd watch movies, but now nobody comes down here. Most people go to Silver Spring, Maryland. With the FBI headquarters moving to Prince George. And, and, and you heard him say most people. I heard him. I heard him. I heard him. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 are, you, are, you, real Octavius, so you already know. You know what I'm saying? You already know. You already know. You already know. And and listen, Silver Spring, another area I used to go to all the time. Like, listen, man, you can't run from these fucking sun turns, <laughs> man. You can't get away from Freddy, a concern. The drugs, the carjackings, all that would just go through the roof. I can remember like 15 years ago, this was the main attraction. All my friends would come down here and we'd watch movies, but now nobody comes down here. Most people go to Silver Spring, Maryland. With the FBI headquarters moving <laughs> and and these sun turds have followed them up there. These sun turds have followed these people. These people have have found a new place to hang out at, and the sons came up there with them. That is insane. Where is Gladys to melt? It's gonna be some sun. That's crazy, right? Exactly. 
Exactly. Headlines about violent crime in Silver Spring. A, a, that, that has inspired new legislation to try to tackle the recent wave of violence. Maureen Ume is live in Silver Spring with more on County Executive Mark Elrich's plan to force late night businesses to create safety plans or face stiff fines or shutdowns even. Mo, good morning. Thanks. So they, you see you see who they putting the onus on, um, conservative, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> it's, it's not on the crime. Cause it's not going to be who was on the crime. <laughs> it's on the business. <laughs> yeah, it's always, it's always like that. We're going to sue these motherfuckers. That's the only variable that they can control. Elrich's plan to force late night businesses to create safety plans or face stiff fines or shutdowns even. Mo, good morning. Good morning. Yes, that uh, legislation will be introduced to county uh, council later today. Uh, in the meantime, yes, a lot of officials very concerned about the rise in crime, particularly here in the downtown Silver Spring area, also in Bethesda, where they've had carjackings. Uh, here in Silver Spring, in particular, of note, a 62-year-old man gunned down just before Christmas after having dinner with his family. Yeah. It happened in a parking garage. And, of course, they've had drag racing type stunts here as well. So a lot of concern about just easing this type of crime, or at least getting a handle on it, the kind of crime that happens late at night. That's what this legislation is about. Let's take you to video from yesterday when uh, the county executive introduced it. Again, this is the late night business plan. Uh, but late night business is located in Silver Springs downtown with the highest number of police calls will be required to submit safety plans. The plans could include security guards, better lighting and cameras. Now, businesses that don't make the plans could be fined. They can also be forced to shut down. Police Chief Mark. <laughs> so you're going to make the business come out of their pockets for all the safety measures or you're going to shut them down because I promise you a bunch of fucking African and Ethiopian and <laughs> fucking African American, like it's all type of thugs out here um, is fucking terrorizing the place. Shit is, shit is just it's, it's, it's sad, it's sad man. Better lighting and cameras of businesses that don't make the plans could be fined. They can also be forced to shut down. Police Chief Marcus Jones says the downtown area is currently under increased police patrols and that surveillance camera coverage has been expanded and automated license plate readers have been deployed. We talked to folks this morning about their concerns about safety and uh, we got. See, one problem Silver Spring has it's across the street from DC. So you don't have it's, it's a suburb. But the DC line, Eastern Avenue, is like the like the border of DC. One side of Eastern Avenue is Silver Spring, and the <laughs> other side is DC. We got a mixed reaction. Access Take to the sun. Crime is on the rise everywhere for a lot of complicated reasons, and uh, well, I... <laughs> <laughs> complicated reasons. I don't think she, I think she want to say niggas. <laughs> she said complicated reasons. She <laughs> said a lot of complicated reasons. No, it's one complicated. She's reason. talking about niggas, though. She's talking about niggas. <laughs> Crime is on the rise for one complicated reason. Fuck are you talking about? Yeah, um, Merry Christmas, Run Dads, man. I Marlin in the building once again. I certainly take a listen. Crime is on the rise everywhere for a lot of complicated reasons. And uh, while I certainly don't want there to be more crime in this area, I don't think it's particularly worse here than in a lot of other places right now. And we need to be focused. Yeah, but this is where you live. See, and they're doing that a lot. Well, it's every everywhere is crimes up. Yeah, but what about where you're at? Are you going to deal with the crime where you're at? Yeah. Uh, yeah, without like making the businesses, like punishing the businesses who are victims of the crime. Like these, these, and listen, I'll give her a break because, she, like I told you, DC whites are woke as shit, and she's basically a DC Silver Springs right there. They're woke as fuck. They're woker than the black people. They're woker than Meek Mills. So <laughs> this is this is to be expected, man. Take a listen. Crime is on the rise everywhere for a lot of complicated reasons. And uh, while I certainly don't want there to be more crime in this area, I don't think it's particularly worse here than in a lot of other places right now. And we need to be focusing on social programs and other um, things of that nature to try to address the problem. Um, police certainly have their, their place. Um, 
and their uh, their role to play in the community. Um, but she feels uncomfortable saying police because as a woke person, as a woke white person, say, saying that police are necessary or saying that police should lock up the criminals. In her mind, she knows that all the criminals out there are black. Yeah, because so she, she so the work. because it's her own. It's her own perception that she's a victim of. It's not like some racist Republican somewhere. No, it's her. She sees that all the criminals are black. All the people hanging out here causing problems are black. All the people walking down the street yelling out rap lyrics at the top of their lungs are black. All the people littering are black. All the people loitering is black. All the people smashing grabs are black. All the people sneaking in the movie theater are black. All the people cussing out white people and shit for microaggressions is black. All the people just spitting loogies and shit on the ground, snot loogies and fucking dumping blunt guts is, is black. She Being knows people that. Harassing on the train. Yeah, she or people that's going to harass on the train are black. So in her mind, the police... Is gonna get them. So she has, she knows in her friend group in her circle, saying calling on the police is calling the police on black people. This is all an internal fucking war this woman's having in her brain because she knows who's doing it. Take a listen. Crime is on the rise everywhere for a lot of complicated reasons. And uh, while I certainly don't want there to be more crime in this area, I don't think it's particularly worse here than in a lot of other places right now. And we need to be focusing on social programs and other um, things of that nature to try to address the problem. Um, police certainly have their their place um, and their, uh, their role to play in the community. Um, but I, I'd like also to see some focus on the preventative side of things on from a social program standpoint. <laughs> she wants more programs. But really, she wants she, out there. But I bet in her neighborhood, on her block, she wants fucking cops. And I think that's a scapegoat, too, like that program shit. I think they say that. They know that shit's not going to work. They just say that just to just to say that. Not like, racist. Yeah, not seem racist. Trust yeah. me. DC to not seem racist. Because you can be racist in the DC, what they call it, the DMV, the area, the, like the DC metropolitan area. You can be racist for shit that you couldn't even be racist for, like on MSNBC or Rashad Ritchie's channel. Like they're way woker than. Like Rashad Ritchie and Young Turks, these motherfuckers at DC are woke woke. So she can be called a racist. They might still, like in her group, they might still be like, it wasn't cool. Like, what do you mean? Like, what she said about police. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, even that little bit she said about police could make her like non persona, non grata and shit in her little fucking circle and shit. And that was pretty much uh, what we're getting from people is just a mixed bag. They don't necessarily feel unsafe, at least uh, this morning. Uh, they'd like to see some sort of mixture of not just policing, but social programs as well. As far as policing goes, Montgomery County is saying that they are down officers, 129. They are looking to recruit. Uh, they are short staff and looking to retain what they have. But that has been an ongoing issue. Again, the safety plan will be introduced to county council later today. <sighs> no solutions, man. Um <laughs> 